Hey guys, Anthony 4 Before Diesel. This is going to be a maximum information like 20 hot tech tips, 20 most important bits of information in 5 minutes. It might take longer, so let's get on with it. Right there in the picture, check your oil pickup. You don't know what I'm talking about? Watch the videos. Don't ring me, watch the videos. What, you saw one or two videos and you want to ring me to get information? Imagine everybody did that. The phone doesn't ring. Stop making a fool of yourself and trying to ring. It's just a red thing that gets cleared at the end of the day. Don't bother trying to ring. Watch the videos and you'll understand about checking the oil pickup because up here you can see the blocked one and here you can see the clear one. That's what you want. Oh look, a little bit more detail. That's with a sump off. That's what a blocked one looks like. How is your engine going to get any oil with a blocked oil pickup like that? wonder what that one would have been caused by. Anyway, that's in other videos. That's what a clear one looks like. See that? A clear oil pickup. It's all in the videos. Please watch the videos. By now you should know that we only supply brand new genuine injectors. That's all we will buy, use, supply, whatever you want to call it, because that's what we believe is the only way to go. No can of feet copies, no other brands, no remanufactured, and as we've explained in other videos, you can find yourself with remanufactured in the same box is what the brand new injectors are. So be very careful. This is why people purchase off me. Parts day is Monday. Text message Monday morning from 7.30 a.m. Get it done in the morning because guess what? We're very busy throughout the week. That's why we've dedicated Monday for parts day. We need to do it in the morning so we can get the payment order across to you, the payment through and get it all packed and sent. And please let us know. Are you in a hurry or not? No, nah, I'm on Captain Casual, take your time, or mediocre, don't waste too much time, or I'm absolutely urgent, I need it ASAP. What's the best size uh, wheels and tires? What's the best wheels? Well, can of worms, watch the videos. Uh, in my opinion, for what I use a full drive for, the KO2s are grippy and reliable. They're grippy on the tracks and reliable in the outback, and they certainly do the job on the blacktop. The genuine wheels are the strongest, most reliable, and the only way to go. Somebody said, do I recommend the plate? Well, the plate, the plate, plate. Well, if you're eating, if you're having dinner or lunch, it's probably got to need to put on the plate, but you can eat it straight off the table or out of the pot if you like. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this plate up here. See this one here with a seven mil hole. There's the gasket. Nice big hole, right? Oh, small hole. So it reduces the flow of the e-jar to help reduce situations like what you can see you know, this one here, this one here, and this block up here, and all that sort of thing. And you'll end up with a scenario, it's still working, but it looks more clean. It's not all blocked up here, whatever. So you've got a little bit of flow coming in there. You get a light sprinkle, but not a build up like what you're getting in these ones. So do I recommend it? I love it, it works, but I can't really recommend it because it may be illegal in your country or your state or whatever. So, you know, that's your decision. I don't know what the I don't think anybody's looking or cares anyway. If anybody knew what's happening to the diesel engines in their standard condition, um, they'd probably go, well, if this re-engineering allows this to still work and not block up, then that makes sense to me. But anyway, that'd be common sense. They say use common sense. You better work it out. It's up to you. I don't recommend catch cans. I don't like EGR systems. So there's two bits of information for you to figure out what that means to uh, you. The old diagnostic snapshot. How do I know when I need to replace my injectors? Well, some people think you just look at those readings, see those ones, one, two, three, four, and you just wait till you know everything's okay till it gets to five. No, well that's wrong. You need to check my diagnostics playlist. I think we covered this at the start, didn't we? Watch the videos. You really need to watch the videos, and I recommend you go through the playlists and check those out. If you want to know how much injectors are, how to buy the kit, that sort of thing, there's a playlist called How to Buy My Kits. Just there on the left, some dirty fuel pipes. See those nozzle seals and how dirty they are? chances that you're going to be able to get those out and not have contamination is very rare so toyota put in the workshop manual when replacing the injectors you must replace the fuel pipes so for they said so and because i said so that's what you do when you're replacing the injectors you must replace the fuel pipes some other brands of injectors have problems right now what you can see here in this picture right is at the top of the um command piston you can see i'll try and get a finger pointer hey here we're getting good at this look at this do, 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 do. all right so this is the solenoid valve that was meant to be coated and it's not this is the nozzle needed that's coated and this is the command piston and look at the coating wearing off at the top just along there not good so stick with brand new genuine we don't see this on brand new genuine some other problems with uh aftermarket injectors or rebuilt injectors and this sort of thing 
and you should be able to see the problem in the picture. See this one's clean, 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 and this one, you got big problems there. That's a massive, massive overfueling situation. That injector, I would estimate, is probably putting in about 10 times more fuel than it should be to end up looking like that. Now that's a result of a very low kilometer remanufactured injector or other brand, let's say. We're not into just hanging on everyone. We just like to tell you that, you know, there is problems. Sometimes you need to know who, who people are, who companies are, who the workers are, when it's really bad or to really get your attention. You know, there's other similar situations, you know, those brass washers and all this sort of thing. But, you know, that's old news, isn't it? Here's a quick bit of information for those that have got a bit less experience. You're about to go away on a trip and you just want to have a quick pre-trip check under your bonnet yourself. Um, better than nothing. What sort of things should you check? Obviously you should check your oil level. So your dipstick is obviously down here on the Prado over that side on the Hilux. And it's usually the yellow thing under the bonnet of any vehicle. With these engines, the correct specification for checking your oil is with warm engine oil, switch it off and five minutes after you switch it off, check your oil level. And it should be obviously somewhere above the bottom dot or line and below the top one. I like prefer to have it near the top one as most people do. And I don't even mind if it's a tiny little bit over. Um, there's probably no real need to check your air filter right before the trip. That's in here, obviously. Have a look at your brake fluid, make sure it looks okay. You shouldn't need to open it. Have a look at your coolant level. Have a look at your battery connections and everything over here. You might even want to just keep an eye on your battery voltage. That's the sort of things you need to check under your bonnet before a trip. Now, did I mention, don't ring me. Copy that, don't ring me. Doesn't matter, just don't ring me. Send a text message if you would like to purchase parts on a Monday morning from 7.30 a.m. Monday's dedicated parts day. Don't ring me. It's just wasting your time. Now, one of the really important things, be very careful who you let work on your vehicle. Now, somebody was dribbling on something about, oh, you're bringing the automotive industry into disrepute. I'm not bringing anyone anywhere, mate. They're the ones wrecking everybody's vehicle. I'm just telling everybody about a few of them. I mean, we just see it one after the other and it seems like nobody can work on vehicles and repair vehicles and service vehicles without wrecking them that's what it seems like and we only tell you about a few of them so you know uh just beware and be very careful who you take your vehicle to think about it the bigger businesses that have got the kids working out the back that aren't properly trained they're not the right people for the job there's a shortage of um staff and that's just going to get worse shortage of trained staff or trainable staff it's just going to get worse, like many other industries and shortages of other products. So beware of that. You really need to get yourself educated, unfortunately, uh, on your you know, second biggest investment. And, and let's go to your first biggest investment, you know, the, the home you live in, the house that you own or that you're paying off, and all the maintenance and the repairs and the upgrades. Again, it's, it, it, it's widespread. It's not just automotive. You've got to be very careful who you let do your uh, replacements, repairs, your building, building quality has gone down the gurgler, um, anything, any upgrades, repairs, you got to, look, there's good companies, there's good people out there that can do things right, but you've really got to do your homework, and for the people that are gone already and not listening, they didn't get this message, and I suppose the ones that are still here, they already knew that anyway. If you get a vehicle, or look at a vehicle, or and it's got an injector in it that looks like that, right? run don't buy the vehicle run just get away from it in my opinion get away from it if it's got that in the engine get the bloody things out we said it at the start check the oil pickup probably the most important thing i don't know what else i can come up with really that important to be quite honest it, when purchasing a vehicle if you start the engine you want to see it cold you want to see a cold engine if you specifically say to someone Please do not say so when, when you arrange to go and have a look at it if you're serious about buying this vehicle You need to say please do not start the engine. I would like to see it cold. Can you do that? Be very, very clear. So has the vehicle been driven today? Is that possible if they say oh no look, you know, I've got to drive it say look Is there a time that you can make the engine cold? It needs to be stone cold not started, right? We're gonna plug in with a scan tool and check the temperature. We're gonna use an infrared thermometer whatever the case may be, right? cheap things you can get off eBay for 20 bucks or something, right? It's got to be stone cold. That means it's going to be the same temperature as the air temp. So if you pull up and your ambient air temp says 22 degrees, when you point the thermometer at, if it's parked in the shade, it's going to be about the same. 
If it's uh, parking in the heat, it's going to be a bit hotter. But the point is, pointed at the coolant tank, it's going to be about the same, no problem. You want to hear that engine running from cold. If it's running rough when it's cold, that's one of your first signs that there is some sort of a problem. It could be minor, it could be major, but remember the engine is the heart of the beast. If there's a compression leak, whether it's from a glow plug, an injector, a spark plug, a dodgy spark plug, a head gasket, all these sorts of things show up when the engine's cold. The worst thing you can do is allow someone to warm it up, blow all that smoke out, warm it up, get it running smoothly, you go for a drive, yeah, it drives all right, drives pretty good, and that's it. Bada bing, you're in trouble, you know? You're in trouble because you didn't see it cold. You've got to see it cold. If you turn, if they said, yeah, no worries, cold, and you turn up and that temperature gauge isn't right down low underneath that bottom, bang, right, right down there, and you can feel that it pop the bonnet first, feel it, it's cool. If you feel heat under the bonnet, they run the engine, right? If you feel the engine, the head, the top of the engine, the cooling system, the hoses, and there's any warmth, check the heater hoses. If there's any warmth whatsoever, mate, you've clearly said, please leave it cold. You need to check these things cold, start it up, let it idle for 20 seconds, give it a bit of a rev, give it a little load, you know, a little rev. And if they're going, oh no, you know, what are you doing? You know, they're nervous because they're selling their problem. Remember, most people are selling you their problem. So there you go. There's a really important one that I hope people hung around for. Let's see what else I can come up with. No, that's it. That's all I've got time for, guys. There's some info for you. Don't ring me. Parts day's Monday. If you're going to travel around this place here in the picture, that's a long way from home. Doesn't matter where you're from. You need to make sure your vehicle is super reliable before you do, because it could be a risk to your own health and safety if it's not. And of course, as a minimum, it's gonna be a real inconvenience. It can also be costly. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it and you got something out of it. It was more to get your attention about the most important things. Don't ring me, no. Check that oil pickup. And if you're looking at purchasing a vehicle, check that engine out when it's cold. Now these pre-purchase inspections, the inspections, they can be worthwhile but they can be a big ripoff too because it costs you hundreds of dollars and it's an all care, no responsibility. And I think if you watch my videos, all of them and the playlist, especially all of the inspection videos and you get to know vehicles really well from looking under them, it's like you're there under them looking at the videos and listening to the explanation. This is probably the best training and better training than you could get. You know, obviously it's not as, oh, I haven't covered everything yet because we've only got 10 minutes a day. Someone else doing training, they've got eight hours a day, right? So if you want more, put it in the comments. I want more, and I don't know how we're gonna do more, but, and also remember to put in the comments what you wanna know about. Guys, doing my best here to help you out. Please hit the like button, and uh, subscribe, turn the bell on, share the info. Thanks for watching, see ya.